Energy comes in many forms, including light, heat, and electricity. Energy can be stored in chemical compounds too. For example, when you light a candle, the wax melts, soaks into the wick, and is burned. As the candle burns, chemical bonds between carbon and hydrogen atoms in the wax are broken. New bonds then form between these atoms and oxygen, producing carbon dioxide and water. These new bonds are at a lower energy state than the original chemical bonds in the wax. The energy is released as heat and light in the glow of the candle's flame. All living cells store energy in the chemical bonds of certain compounds. Of these compounds, one of the most important is adenosine triphosphate. ATP consists of adenine, a 5-carbon sugar called ribose, and three phosphate groups. The phosphate groups are the key to ATP's ability to store and release energy. Adding a phosphate group to adenosine diphosphate adds energy to the molecule and changes it to ATP. When a cell requires this energy, it removes the third phosphate group from ATP, changing it to ADP again. Adenosine triphosphate is one of the most important compounds that cells use to store and release energy. Adenosine diphosphate has two phosphate groups instead of three. When a cell has energy available, it can store small amounts of it by adding phosphate groups to ADP molecules producing ATP. ATP can release energy by breaking the bonds between its phosphate groups. This characteristic of ATP makes it exceptionally useful as a basic energy source for all cells. ATP is the most immediate source of energy for cells. When a cell needs energy, it can release it by breaking the bond between the second and third phosphate groups in ATP. Cells must produce ATP. In photosynthesis, plants convert the energy of sunlight into chemical energy stored in the bonds of carbohydrates. Cells use the energy provided by ATP to carry out active transport. Many cell membranes contain cytodium, sodium potassium pumps, which are membrane proteins that pump sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell. ATP provides the energy that keeps this pump working, which involves maintaining a carefully regulated balance of ions on both sides of the cell membrane. The energy stored in ATP also enables cells to move providing power for motor proteins that contract muscles and generate the wave-like movement of cilia and flagella. Energy from ATP can be transferred to other molecules in the cell to power processes such as protein synthesis. The chemical energy from ATP can even be converted to light. In fact, the blink of a firefly comes from an enzyme that is powered by ATP. Most cells have only enough ATP to last for a few seconds of activity. ATP is not a good molecule for storing large amounts of energy over the long term. A single molecule of the sugar glucose, for example, stores more than 90 times the energy required to add a phosphate group to ADP to produce ATP. Therefore, it is more efficient for cells to keep only a small amount supply of ATP on hand. Cells regenerate ATP from ADP as needed by using the energy in sugars and other sources. All animals obtain the chemical energy they need from the food they consume. Animals are known as heterotrophs, which are organisms that obtain energy by consuming other organisms. Some heterotrophs eat plants and are known as herbivores. Others, such as the heron, consume other animals and are known as carnivores. Animals that eat both plants and other animals are known as omnivores. Decomposers are heterotrophs that consume dead organisms and the waste of living organisms. A mushroom is an example of a decomposer. Autotrophs are organisms that make their own food using an external source of energy. Most autotrophs use sunlight as a source of energy and are known as photoautotrophs. Chemoautotrophs use chemicals as a source of energy and are found only near vents on the ocean floor. Photosynthesis is the process by which photoautotrophs convert light energy into chemical energy. Photosynthetic organisms include plants, algae, and bacteria known as cyanobacteria. Nearly all life on Earth depends on autotrophs that capture sunlight and synthesize high-energy carbohydrates, 
sugars and starches that can be used as food. Organisms that make their own food are heterotrophs. Organisms that obtain food by consuming other living things are heterotrophs.